Now let's move on to the application security wizard. The application security wizard supports two types of security. There's authentication, which governs who can sign in. And there is authorization, which is what you can do once you are signed in. And Designer will generate both of those. And it generates both of those using four different protocols that you can choose from. There's database security, where the login and role information is stored in your application database. There's Active Directory security, where the login and role information is in a Microsoft Active Directory server somewhere on your network. There's SharePoint, where you're using Microsoft SharePoint groups to configure security. That way, once you log into SharePoint, you are automatically logged into your designer-generated application that is running inside of SharePoint. Finally, there's Windows Authentication, which uses your network credentials to log in. Now, a great thing about this is that oftentimes you can mix and match. You can, for example, select Windows Authentication as your authentication type and database authorization, meaning you sign in, you've got single sign-on with your Windows authentication, but your role uh, designation, what roles and activities you can perform, uh, is specified actually in the underlying database. You can also do that with SharePoint, for example. Let me give you an example of simple sign-in security using our security wizard. Here you point our security wizard at a database table that contains the login information, particularly three fields, username, password, and the primary key or unique user ID field. Now typically, you wouldn't just have a user's field with, or a user's table with these three fields. You would have this in combination with some other information. For example, this information would typically be found in a customer's table or in the case of the Southwind database, in the employee's table. So it's got all the employee information plus their username and password. Or it has all the customer information plus their username and password. The fields don't have to be called username and password. They can be called uh, Bill and Joe if you want. It doesn't really matter. You just have to specify which fields to use to the wizard. Next, you can add role-based security or authorization if you want. And again, you do that in the wizard by pointing it at a user roles table. A roles table is a many-to-many -many mapping between a user and the roles that they can have. So you can see in this uh, illustration, user 1 has two roles, roles 3 and 4. User 2 is a member of four roles, number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, of course, you may not know in Iron Speed Designer when you're configuring roles what role 27 is. In this case, it's common for you to have a role names lookup table. Iron Speed Designer will attach to that lookup table if you've got the foreign key defined between the uh, roles and the, the lookup table. And it will automatically display to you in Designer itself the role names rather than the role numbers. Uh, that way you're not trying to guess what role 27 is. You can look it up and say, ah, uh, that's tech support. Finally, you select which roles you want to apply to which pages. Click the Set button to apply them, and that effectively uh, is done. You just need to click Finish, and ISB Designer will regenerate your application, embedding now the security into the page classes. Now, one important point is that security can also be set on an individual control basis, in addition to setting it on a page-by-page -page basis. To do this, you first turn on security for, for pages. That enables security uh, in the general sense. And then you use the property sheet to select an individual control that you might like to hide or display based on the role that they're a member of. So you simply select the control you want, select the roles that they need to be in order to see that control, and click OK, and Designer will do the rest for you. This is very common when you want to, uh, for example, display an edit or delete button to certain users but not to other classes of users. Now let's see all of this in action. I'm going to use the Southwind database to generate a simple sign-in authentication, and then we'll see if we can make that a little more interesting by then filtering a data table based on the logged-in user. Let me go back to Iron Speed Designer now, and I'm going to turn on application security. I do this by going to the Tools menu, and I select the Application Security Wizard. I'm going to select 
database authentication. And to keep it simple, we'll go only with authentication, and we won't pick authorization. I'll select now my users table. In my case, the user information is in the employees table. I'll select the email address as the username, the password field as the password, and I'll pick the employee ID field as my unique user ID field. We'll click Next, and now we simply need to assign which pages we want to require me to log in for. Now I have four built-in roles. There is everyone, which means that everyone can see the page regardless of whether they're signed in. There's no one, which means no one can see the page regardless of whether you're signed in. This is useful for pages that are under construction that you really don't want anyone to see. There are signed in users. That's actually what I want, meaning you have to be signed in to sign in. And then there are not signed in users. You would use not signed in users for pages where uh, you might want to create an account where you say something like, not a customer, create an account today. Well, you wouldn't want to show that page to someone who is signed in as a customer because that would confuse them into thinking that they're not signed in. Now, I'm going to uh, select the signed in users. I'll select all of my pages here. And now I'm going to change it from the everyone permission, which was the default, by clicking set. And we'll change it to signed in users. Now I'm just going to click finish. At this point, the uh, Iron Speed Designer starts uh, regenerating my application. Now it's going to regenerate all 90 of my application pages that I had built, plus the handful of helper pages. What it's specifically going to do is it's going to modify or update the page class to insert a uh, uh, authenticate or login call for each of these uh, uh, particular pages. That way, no matter where I am in the application, if I access a page, it's going to say, hey, uh, am I logged in or not? And it's going to authenticate me. Now, of course, once I've logged in, uh, then I'm in, and I, I don't need to get authenticated uh, uh, each time. Uh, now, many people like the single sign-in feature that you get with Windows Authentication or SharePoint or Active Directory. In those cases, what will happen is that Iron Speed Designer will check to see if you're logged into your machine already, and if so, attempt to apply that to your application. If that works, great, you're in. You won't be presented with a, a sign-in page. But if you happen to be uh, uh, using uh, uh, accessing your application from a, uh, uh, an internet uh, uh, cafe in Ulaanbaatar, uh, and you're not signed into your machine as you normally would be, then you'll get the sign-in page because it'll detect that, hey, you're not logged into your machine using you know, Windows authentication or uh, SharePoint or whatever. OK, it's done generating. And the amazing thing about this is that it's generated 97 pages in, in what, about 30 seconds here you know, to update this. It's, uh, you, know, you can't do that by hand, you know, modify 97 uh, 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 code files like that. OK, now we're going to go back to Live Preview. Now, when I go to Live Preview, I'm going to be immediately prompted here, do I want to temporarily disable application security? I don't want to do that. That's a convenience for a developer, because as you keep rebuilding your pages, you'll be asked to, to log in again. Well, you can turn that on and off using the Security button up here. It leaves all your security settings intact. It just temporarily disables them. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to do that, because I actually want to let the .NET Framework compiler here compile my page, and then I want to actually see the sign-in page so that I can sign in. I want to actually test my application security. So at this point, we're just waiting for the .NET Framework compiler. Now we're done. We have our sign-in page. And so I need to log in. Now I'm using an employee to log in here. In this case, I'm going to pick an employee called Andrew Fuller. And, and there we have it. We're, we're back to our application now. Okay? So that's all it takes to, uh, to, to do that. I'm in, I'm in now, and uh, 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 let's take it now to the next step. And in particular, what I'd like to do is go to this Show Orders page here. Suppose I'm logged in as an employee. I'm Andrew Fuller. And I can see everyone's orders here. And maybe I don't want uh, Andrew to be able to see everyone's orders. Maybe I want Andrew to only be able to see his orders. You can see I'm showing 830 items here, okay? and all of these different employees in addition to Andrew Fuller. 
suppose I want to secure this now and show only Andrew's orders. To do that, I go back to design mode. I right click here in my spreadsheet and I go to the query. This is the Iron Speed Designer Query Wizard. And in particular, I'm going to pick the where step because that's where I'm going to add my filter. I'm going to select the add where clause. And now I'm just going to define a simple where clause that says, show me only the logged in user's orders. I want to say where orders, that's the table I'm on, dot order, or sorry, employee ID. So orders dot employee ID is equal to, and I'll use a little formula here, is equal to user ID. Now, I can tell what formula to use by right-clicking, and I can select you know, all of the different functions. In my case, I knew that there was a security function out here called user ID, but I could also check for username and uh, other things as well. So in my case, I'm going to use the user ID function. So I'm essentially saying that this current table orders in the employee field in orders, orders.orderID is equal to the current user ID, the logged in user ID. So we'll click uh, OK. We'll click Finish, and now we'll go back to Live Preview. We'll let Iron Speed Designer regenerate the page now, so it has to be the code has to be uh, regenerated because I've changed the underlying query uh, a little bit, so it's uh, got to regenerate that. And then we have to wait for the .NET Framework compiler to do its uh, work as well, the compilation. Sometimes I think we should play the final Jeopardy theme song. Uh, while waiting for .NET to catch up with us and do the compilation. So if you can, uh, just imagine Alec Trebek kind of standing there looking serious while the contestants are uh, uh, putting their final answers down on their little uh, uh, pieces of cardboard. You ever notice that there's always one guy who uh, never gets the answer uh, until the last uh, second and one guy who always immediately has the answer? Okay, now we need to sign in again. And there we have it. You'll notice that I went from 830 items in this table to the 96 items that belong to my sales rep, Andrew Fuller, here. So that's a very, very powerful feature, being able to filter uh, based on any criteria uh, you want, you know, especially using formulas. And it's very handy when you want to restrict certain pages to only logged in customers or logged in employees and, and so forth.